In this section, we will see how to set up and perform a paid run for our employees in QuickBooks. I'm on my home screen. In order to access the Payroll Center, which is where we can set up and perform our paid runs, I can click on the icon that says Pay Employees, or I can go to the Employees menu on top and select Payroll Center. Now notice that on the left, I'm on the right tab that says Payroll. I then need to click the tab that says Pay Employees. Now in QuickBooks, you can run payroll either on a schedule or you can run it as not scheduled. To set up a new payroll schedule, I'm going to click Payroll Schedules and hit New. At Adams Fittings and Supply, employees are paid semi-monthly, that is twice a month, being the 15th and at the end of the month. So I'll call this schedule semi-monthly. And for my pay frequency, I'll select semi-monthly from the drop-down. For the first paycheck of the month, I'll have the 15th day appear on checks for our pay period ending on the 15th. And for my second paycheck of the month, I'll have the last day of the month appear on checks for a pay period ending on the last day of the month. I'm also going to specify my next check date as March 15th, 2019. For a pay period end date of March 15th, 2019. And I just copied and pasted these two dates since they are the same. I'm now going to hit OK. And I'll select Yes to this prompt. We're now asked if we want to assign all employees who have a payroll frequency set as semi-monthly to this payroll schedule. I'm going to select Yes. And if I click the Employee tab on the left, and if I right click on Sean Green, click Edit Employee, and click Payroll Info, you'll see that QuickBooks has allocated him to the semi-monthly payroll schedule that we just set up. Let me hit OK and go back to the Payroll tab. Now notice that QuickBooks is warning us that we need to run our payroll as it is currently overdue. To do this, I'm going to click this line and then click Start Scheduled Payroll. It then warns us that we have not entered any year-to-date adjustments for our employees. If you did have year-to-date amounts to enter, like Canada Pension and Employment Insurance deductions to date, you should enter these. But for this demonstration, I'm going to pass on this warning by hitting OK. Now it shows my pay period end date and check date, along with which bank account my employees will be paid out of. Right now these are correct, but you can modify any of these if you need to. Below, it shows me that Sean Green is selected for payroll. If I had other employees, they'd also be listed below, and I can select which ones I want to pay by checking them on or off on the left. I'm now going to click Sean, and I will select Open Paycheck Detail. I'm going to click OK on this warning, and I want you to take a moment to see what is happening on this screen. On top, my gross salary is indicated as $2,916.67, which if you multiply this number by 24 pay periods, it's equivalent to our yearly salary of $70,000 that we put in for Sean, so the base salary is correct. However, since Sean started on March 5th and not March 1st, I will be changing the salary amount to the prorated amount of 
and 89 cents for this paycheck only. For my hours, I must fill this in for record of employment purposes, even if I don't pay Sean hourly. So the hours worked during this pay period is 72 hours. Here, I can indicate if I want my payroll cost assigned to a specific customer or job, like if Sean only worked to service Joan Smith, for example. Since he is a warehouse manager and services many customers in the company, this would not apply to him. Notice below that it has pulled in my garnishment deduction of $725, as we specified under Sean's employee info in the previous section. Also notice below that it's calculating the employer taxes. That is my workers' compensation, being 2.5% of my gross pay above, along with Canada Pension Plan and employee insurance. On the right, it's showing me what taxes are being deducted off my employee's gross pay, along with the CRA garnishment amount deducted, and my 4% vacation pay being added. And to the right, it shows me the total year-to-date amounts. Since this is the first pay run we are running for Sean, both columns will be the same. If I paid my employee a net check and I needed to find out what the gross amounts were, I can check off this box and it would work backwards what my gross salary and deductions should be to get me to my specified net amount. I'm going to hit save and close. For the other employees we would have listed, I would have to go into their checks and make any modifications if necessary. Once we have made all of our payroll modifications, you'll then click continue on the bottom. You'll then be presented with a preview screen, showing me what check number I want to use if I'm manually writing out checks. I'm going to put in 280 here. But if you were paying employees via e-transfer or some other direct method, you can just put in DD, for example, and it would keep this as is. Also, if I were printing these checks directly from QuickBooks, I would instead select this radio button on the left and proceed with the printing preferences. Below, it shows me what my total deductions and employer contributions will be. So I'm going to hit Create Paychecks, select Yes, and now I can either print the paychecks along with print or email the pay stubs. Even if you are manually writing out these checks, I recommend at least printing to PDF a copy of your checks and your stubs so you have this for your internal records. If I click Print Email Pay Stubs, I can select which employees I want to produce stubs for. I can also insert a company message to appear on each stub below. I'll leave the note that says Confidential, Contact HR if you discover any irregularities. And if I hit preview, and if I zoom in a bit, I can see what my pay stub will look like before I give it to my staff. I'm going to hit close on this screen and here as well, and here too. Now in the employee center, if I hit dates as all under Sean Green, it will show me my paycheck. If I double click on it and hit paycheck detail, I'm brought into the screen showing me my details. Also, if I hit OK, click the Reports tab on top, and select Transaction Journal, 
and move this column out a bit. I can verify what accounts QuickBooks is debiting and crediting when it recorded my payroll check. So that concludes how you perform a scheduled pay run in QuickBooks. So we just walk through how to perform a scheduled pay run in QuickBooks. If I wanted to perform an unscheduled pay run, like let's say on March 17th, two days after my regular payday, I also want to give Sean a $1,000 bonus check. What I would do is go back to the payroll center, select start unscheduled payroll, and then I would manually change my dates above and input the bonus amount the same way as a regular pay run like we just did. I'm going to hit escape to exit these screens. So that concludes how to set up and perform a basic pay run in QuickBooks. Now that we've paid our employees, we now need to pay the government for the source deductions withheld. This is what we'll explore in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see more QuickBooks Canada videos from Simon Says It, click over there. And click over there to upgrade to the full QuickBooks Canada course.